everyone. I'm Joe, and I'm on a quest to be less miserable. And I'm trying to find the most beneficial, sustainable, and simple ways to do this. Get stuck in and find out the actual science behind why some of these things are really meant to be good for your health and well-being. Like when I talk about NAIs in this video, or when I talk about earthing in this one. I don't just want to say to you, go out in the forest, you'll feel better. I've put quite a lot of time and effort reading the scientific papers, something that I've never done before, something that I never thought that I would do, but I'm actually quite enjoying learning, more than when I had to do it at school anyway. I want to try and understand all of this for myself and then break it down for you and me to understand a little bit more simply than needing a science degree because I got a double D in my GCSE science, so my brain doesn't understand very long words. As always, I'll put the links of all the papers that I've read in the description box below if you want to read them further. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about forest bathing. And no, that is not having a bath in the forest, although that does sound lovely. Forest bathing is also known as Shinrin-yoku. This is a Japanese practice, and it's more than just going for a walk in the woods. It's actually a scientifically backed way of really enhancing your mental and physical well-being. Make sure to watch to the end for the most beneficial aspect of forest bathing. It's pretty incredible. So what exactly is Shinrin-yoku? The term Shinrin-yoku, in other words, taking in the forest atmosphere or forest bathing, was coined by the Japanese Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries in 1982 which is basically being in contact with and taking in the atmosphere of the forest. A process intended to improve an individual state of physical and mental relaxation. It's considered to be the most widespread activity connecting nature with human health. Research has shown that spending time in nature can reduce your stress levels. One of those key players is cortisol, the hormone responsible for stress. Now I must stress that cortisol is not all bad, but I think I'll talk about that another time. Studies have found that people who spend more time in nature have lower cortisol levels than people in urban environments, city lifers. Forest bathing can also improve your mood and cognitive function. Studies have shown that spending time in a forest can reduce symptoms such as anxiety and depression. It can also enhance your creativity and problem solving skills. In one study, participants who walked in the forest for 90 minutes showed decreased activity in a part of the brain linked with depression. Another study found that spending time in nature can increase your attention span and memory performance up to 20%. All of these things I could really benefit from. The study that I found the most interesting and exciting was one that affects our immune system. Trees and plants emit something called phytoncides, and that's to help them fight bad insects and pathogens. Pathogens are what cause them disease. When we breathe in these phytoncides, it helps increase the activity of our natural killer cells, natural born killers. And that helps us fight infections and disease too. Pow! So how can you do Shinrin-yoku? You don't need to go to Japan, you can just go to the forest. Take your headphones off, experience the pleasures of the birds. Why not touch a tree or a little plant? Take a big breath in of the phytoncides. There's no need to rush. Take your time, be present, have a little stroll. I've read that two hours is an ideal time to do forest bathing. However, that's not always doable. A bit is better than nothing in my book. Just do what you can. Thank you for bathing in the forest with me. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a comment, a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week.